What attracted me to watercolor is its beautiful, transparent nature, but that beautiful quality just couldn't be found in my painting when I first started to paint. Even today, I still tend to mess it up from time to time. So today, I want to share with you three things to avoid so you can start painting clean, beautiful watercolor. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. A clean and fresh watercolor with its beautiful transparency showing is something I want pretty much for all of my paintings. But it doesn't happen all the time, especially when I first started to paint. I struggled to keep my watercolor looking nice and clean, like those paintings done by the master that I admire. And now I see the same struggles with some of my students. Now, it could be because of the material you use. Low quality paint and paper will make your painting not look as good. But I'll say for the most part, there are things you should avoid when you are painting to keep your painting clean and beautiful. Number one, avoid too many layers. Because of the transparent nature of watercolor, it's always tempting to add more layers to achieve dark and rich colors. However, if you add too many layers, it can get dirty very quickly. Not only can the layering make the color muddy, but you are also running into the risk of new wash dissolving the pigments underneath, ruining the consistency of the wash you might already have. I usually keep my paintings 3 to 4 layers, with each layer smaller shapes than the previous one. After 4 layers, the most I would do is a thin, transparent glaze, but even that can be risky. So it's better to mix the right value when you are painting rather than try to keep adding more layers. And that's not easy to do, I still mess it up sometimes, but that's something we can all work on. And that leads to my next point. Number 2. Avoid dry mixture too early. The water and paint ratio is a bit of a mystery for watercolor painters. Sometimes we use less water when we want to have darker value. That does work, but you will run out of mixture very quickly. Because the paint does need water to flow better, you will want to add more paint instead of decrease the water in your mixture. It's like coffee. If you want a strong tasting coffee, you can do a double shot espresso and drink it with water or milk like a latte, or just make a single shot and drink it straight out. Both are strong coffee, but the double shot one will last you longer. The same thing for watercolor, especially if you are painting a big middle value shape. A drier mixture will give you a very hard time. So if you find your mixture too light, keep the amount of water in your mixture and add more paint. And number three, avoid small brushes. I sometimes see students try to paint a big shape with a small brush when they can use a bigger brush and finish that shape in just a few brush strokes. Maybe because the lack of confidence or the desire for better control. But if you use a brush that is too small, you will need to keep reloading the brush with paint because it simply won't be able to hold much paint. And then you will need to paint with a lot more brush strokes. Both will disrupt the flow of a nice clean wash because you are not letting the watercolor settle down on paper. This also means you will take a longer time to finish a single wash. And what's going to happen is you might have part of the wash that's already starting to dry while you are still trying to finish the wash with a wet paint. That can easily make your wash dirty. So take a bigger brush and paint with confidence. This brush is a little bit too big, but you know what I mean. And even if the shape doesn't look as accurate as you want with a bigger brush, it's better to have a nice clean looking painting than an overworked muddy painting. Now, I'm not immune to these mistakes when I'm not consistently trying to avoid them. This is why I still have failed paintings. But I believe this is a good reminder to make plans and to make conscious decisions when we paint. Now I want to share the process of this painting of the Golden Gate Bridge scene. I painted this scene twice because my first attempt made a few mistakes that I mentioned earlier. I just can't wait to share my embarrassment with you. But I want to be real with you. I make mistakes too and I'm learning to be better just like many others. So if you find my video helpful, consider giving it a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon so you will get a notification for my new videos. Okay, let's take a look at this painting process. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the process of this painting. First of all, if you're interested to watch the full unedited, unsped up version of this demo, you can check out my Patreon page. It's for the Patreon members. Anyway, so I start off with a line drawing. The structure of the bridge is pretty important. I try to freehand it just so that it looks a little bit more organic, but you can definitely use ruler or any other tools if you want. And then I did a very quick value study. This is something that I didn't do when I was doing the first attempt. I thought the value of this image should be pretty simple and straightforward, so I didn't do a value study and I go straight to painting. However, I think that wasn't a very good idea. So the second time around, I did a small and very simple value study. I think value study is useful not only to group your value shapes together, but also gives you a very good warm up before your actual color painting. So the benefit of painting a small value study before your actual color painting cannot be understated. So I start off with my first wash for my color painting. I pre the sky because there are quite a bit of cloud in the sky. The day I took that photo is actually a rainy overcast day. There is a little bit of opening on the right side of the sky and you see a little bit of warm light on the right. So that's something that I want to put in my painting as well. That being said, if you squint your eyes and look at the photo, the sky is very, very light. So I am not mixing a very dark color for the sky. The main purpose is really just to have some variety in the sky so that it doesn't look completely flat. Adding a little bit of the warm color on the right, a little bit darker cloud and smaller cloud near the horizon. Here I use a little bit of masking fluid because I want to preserve some white for the headlight in the distant car. It's very subtle though, you can barely see it, especially in the photo. When you're looking at the bridge surface, you actually don't see any car because they are so far away and so small. Continue to wash and paint the water surface. And before it is dry, I start to putting some reflections and some ripples wet onto wet. I want to keep the reflections soft because it's really far away. So, so all the ripples are barely visible. They become this soft shape. So after the first wash, I start to paint the background mountain. So the process is very typical watercolor. You start from light to dark, from background to foreground. I'm using a medium sized brush. I really want a clean wash. And I did skip around trying to hinting some details in the background. So maybe some buildings, some road, cars, whatever. I'm definitely not copying the photo one to one. These are just some perceived detail and I'm trying to do those very loosely. And now I'm painting the tower in the distance. I try to keep the color muted and a little bit cool. It is a overcast day. So the color are not showing very brightly. You can see that in the photo. If it's a sunny day and the bridges and the tower are lit by the sun, then you will see some bright red. But in this case, I try to keep them a little bit more muted. So it is important to observe your source material, really study and analyze it. And that's not to say that you need to copy the photo one to one, but if you want to paint a believable painting, your color has to make sense. If it's an overcast day and you're using bright red, then it's not going to look believable. And here I am painting the tower in the middle ground. This one is much bigger. The mixture is just a little bit heavier with a little bit more color. So you do see the color become a little bit more saturated than the distant tower and also a little bit darker as well. So that subtle change will help to reinforce the depths of the painting. And I connect that shape to the rail of the bridge and then connect that to the supporting structure of the bridge. And here you need to pay attention to your mixture. It needs to have enough water so it can flow easily and you are able to connect the shape with ease. 
and at the same time, the color needs to be intense enough to be the middle value. So make sure you add more paint if the color turns out too weak. Here I'm trying to add just a little bit more dark to the tower in the front before it is completely dry. Here I'm trying to paint the cable for the bridge. Again, those are all freehand as well. You don't need to be that accurate, but you want to have confident brushstroke so that it looks nice and clean. Reinforce that cable shape a little bit. And here I start to paint the mountains in the middle ground. The value should be pretty similar to the tower of the bridge. Definitely darker than the background so the depths can show. And I try to do some wet onto wet while the wash is still moist. And here you want to connect the mountain shape to the base structure of the bridge. If you squint your eyes and look at a reference photo, the shape all connect together. So it's important to focus on the big shape. And I made that mistake in my first attempt. I was looking at the photo too closely and that sort of misled me to start painting too many little shapes. And it's also very dangerous when you're focusing on a specific part of the photo, your eyes start to adjust to the contrast within that shape. So when you look at my first attempt, you see there's a little bit too much contrast on the mountain because I try to push that contrast too much while looking at the reference photo. And I try to replicate that. But in reality, there's not that much contrast there. It's all middle to dark value. So I'm just doing some wet onto wet right now, trying to add a little bit more volume and some hints of the trees and bushes. Just try to make it look more rich without adding too much detail and unnecessary contrast. Now, some people might actually prefer more contrast in their painting and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I want to keep my painting looking transparent and clean. And that's the goal for my painting. Adding some soft shape in the foreground just to hint that there's stuff underneath the bridge but there's really no need to define it very clearly. Some more wet onto wet work before the wash is completely dry. And you can see those soft shapes definitely help to reinforce more volume and more lushness for the mountain. So again, even though the contrast is not as strong as my first attempt, I actually like this a lot better because it looks more natural. In an overcast day, you actually don't see that much contrast in the scenery. But when you're taking a digital image, it always try to push the contrast a little bit more. So you need to be aware of that. Back to my value study and try to add some more dark. And again, this really helps me to organize my value so that I have a solid plan to keep going. Now back to the color painting. The wash is pretty much dry, but I thought I'd add a little bit more dark for the supporting structure and some part of the bridge. But again, I definitely don't want to overdo it like my first attempt. Really think about if pushing the dark will actually help your painting. And especially in the foreground, in my first attempt, I tried to copy the photo exactly, try to make it really dark, those supporting beings, but for this one, I actually try to keep it loose and transparent. Just let it fade in the atmosphere. And I believe that looks better and a little bit more transparent and airy. Now I come back and add some dark to the rock on the shore. Leave out some of the middle value for the road. And also paint the rock on the left. Here I'm using a darker mixture. But still, the mixture is really not that dry. There's still a good amount of moisture in it so that I can make a nice clean wash. 
some more dark details, trying to make the painting look just a little bit more sophisticated without overdo it. So when I finish my first attempt of this painting, I leave it on the easel. That's something that I always do. So that whenever I walk into the studio, I look at the painting and it just sort of reminds me that I can do better. So I decided to do it again. And I'm really glad that I did because I like the second attempt so much better. So that's why I always encourage my student, if you know you can do better, don't give up, try again. Here is the finished painting. I really like how this one turns out. The washes looks nice and fresh and clean. That's exactly what I want for my painting. I hope you enjoy this process and I hope this demo really helps you. In one of my previous coffee talks, I mentioned the definition of a successful painting. And for me, I want my painting to have that nice and clean transparent quality of watercolor. This is why I will always try it again if I didn't achieve that. That's it for this video. I know I haven't done this type of lesson video for a while because it takes quite a bit of time to do everything from scripting, filming to editing. This is also a busy year for me, so obviously I'm not able to do this type of video every week. But if there is something I believe that can be very helpful for you, I will definitely make a dedicated video talking about it. Once again, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.